This is the last time Claudia Lawrence was seen. The 35-year-old chef from York disappeared without a trace on March 18th last year. The case of Claudia Lawrence saw numerous appeals, arrests and searches, but her body has never been found. During those 14 years, there have been theories come forward and possible leads and hope that we're nearing a conclusion, but every time it's come to nothing. On a quiet morning, Claudia Lawrence, a 35-year-old chef from York, vanished without a trace. She left behind her home, her belongings, and the echoes of her last conversations with family and friends. As the days turned into weeks, then years, what began as a missing person case became one of the most mysterious and haunting disappearances in British history. But what exactly happened to Claudia? And was she eventually found? Claudia Elizabeth Florence was born on February 27, 1974, in Malton, North Yorkshire, England. She was Peter and Joan Lawrence's second daughter. Growing up in a modest but close-knit family, Claudia had one older sister named Allie. The Lawrence family lived a simple life in Malton, where both parents worked to provide for their two daughters. Peter Lawrence was a solicitor, and Joan was a housewife, who later took up part-time work when the girls grew older. The family emphasized the importance of education and hard work, which would be values that Claudia carried with her throughout her life. As a child, Claudia was known for her bright smile and friendly nature. Her easygoing personality made it simple for her to make friends. She was sociable but also had a quiet side, preferring to spend her free time reading books or drawing pictures. Claudia was an animal lover from a young age often taking in stray cats or volunteering at local animal shelters when she could. This love for animals was something that stayed with her throughout her life, and she was often seen feeding or caring for animals in her neighborhood. Claudia attended local schools in Melton, where she was a diligent student. Although she wasn't the top of her class, she was consistent and reliable in her schoolwork. Her teachers often praised her for her strong work ethic and her willingness to help others. In secondary school, Claudia developed a passion for food and cooking. She enrolled in home economics classes where she discovered her talent for preparing meals. Her family encouraged this passion and Claudia often prepared dinners for them on weekends, honing her skills in the kitchen. After completing her secondary education, Claudia decided to pursue a career in the culinary field. She attended York College, where she studied catering. York was only a short distance from Melton, and Claudia commuted daily for her classes. At college, she excelled in her courses and made several close friends who shared her love for cooking. After completing her studies, Claudia began working as a chef in various restaurants and pubs in York and the surrounding areas. She was known for her dedication and skill in the kitchen, often working long hours and taking on extra shifts when needed. In 2007, Claudia landed a job as a chef at the University of York's Goodrich College. She loved this position because it offered stability and regular hours. Her job at the university also allowed her to establish a routine, and she found contentment in her work. The early morning shifts didn't bother her, and she enjoyed the camaraderie among her colleagues in the kitchen. She got on with her work. She kept herself to self, wasn't really bothered in the other people's gossip. There was the usual banter in the kitchen. You need to be a bit quicker doing this, or she prepped a carrot, doing it the right thickness. <laughs> Stuff like that, really. I think her main interest in it was her social life with her friends. She liked to enjoy herself after work. Claudia had an active social life in a wide circle of friends who admired her for her hilarious and incredible personality. Just hilarious, and I just remember thinking that she was just so funny. Yeah. <laughs> that stupid little voice that she would yeah. adopt, but. <laughs> 
But it was nice to, to, to know the lovely person that she was and is. She was often described as a people person, always ready to listen to and support those who needed it. Her friends came from various walks of life, and Claudia was known for her ability to connect with people regardless of their background. Whether it was sharing a drink at the local pub or having a quiet conversation over a cup of tea, Claudia made people feel comfortable and valued. One of Claudia's favorite places to socialize was the Nags Head, a pub near her home and hearth, a suburb of York. The pub was a central hub for many locals, and Claudia became a regular there. She formed close friendships with the pub staff and other patrons and was known for her lively conversations and warm personality. Changed everything. Changed everything for Claudia, for us, and for the way the whole investigation was going to go forward. And I just thought, shit, this is not the way I wanted it to go at all. Claudia was also close to her family, particularly her father Peter. The two shared a special bond, often going on walks together or spending time chatting about life. Peter was always there for Claudia, and she often turned to him for advice when facing challenges. Despite their close relationship, Claudia cherished her independence and preferred to handle things on her own whenever she could. She rented her own home in Hearth, not far from her parents' house in Melton, enabling her to maintain independence while staying close to her family. In her free time, Claudia enjoyed traveling and had a particular fondness for Cyprus. She visited the island several times over the years, forming friendships with locals and other expatriates. Cyprus was a place where Claudia could relax and soak up the sun, something she loved to do. She often talked about her trips to Cyprus with friends and family, sharing stories of the beaches, the food, and the people she met there. For Claudia, Cyprus represented a sense of freedom and adventure, and she dreamed of possibly moving there one day. Claudia also loved music, mainly classic rock and pop from the 1980s. She attended concerts whenever she could, and her friends often remembered her dancing and singing along to her favorite tunes. As Claudia entered her mid-30s, she continued to live a life that balanced work, family, friendships, and personal interests. She enjoyed the simple pleasures of life, whether it was a good meal, a glass of wine with friends, or a sunny day spent outside. She appreciated the little things and found joy in the everyday moments that made up her life. Life seemed like it was going great for Claudia when tragedy struck. On March 19, 2009, something very unusual happened. Claudia was supposed to go to work that morning, but she didn't show up in the kitchen. Her absence seemed strange because Claudia was known to be reliable. When she didn't arrive, people began to worry. On the same day, Claudia's friend Susie tried to get in touch with her. Susie was worried because they had plans to meet, but Claudia hadn't contacted her to cancel or explain why she wasn't there. Her character was just ripped to pieces, people intimating that she deserved what had happened to her. They didn't see Claudia as a victim of a crime. It had such a catastrophic impact upon people's willingness to come forward to find a young girl that had gone missing. This was unusual behavior for Claudia, who was always careful to let people know about her plans. When Susie couldn't reach Claudia by phone, she became even more concerned and thought that something might be wrong. Consequently, Susie decided to take action. Susie contacted Peter Lawrence, Claudia's father, to inform him about the situation. Learning that Claudia had not shown up for work or met with Susie made him feel uneasy. The Tuesday, she looked a bit worse or where. And I said to her, you look, a bit, you look a bit rough this morning, this morning. And she says, yeah. And I said, so, no, you get no sleep last night. 
She said, no, not a lot. She informed me, yeah, she'd been out and she was being with a male friend the evening and uh, things progressed. As a father, he was familiar with his daughter's habits and realized that this was out of character for her. Claudia was responsible. If she could not attend a meeting, she would always inform someone. Peter felt something serious might have happened. So he went to Claudia's home to check on her. When Peter arrived at Claudia's home in Hearth Road in York, everything seemed normal. Her car was parked outside, and there was no sign of struggle or anything that looked out of place. The house was quiet and tidy, and Claudia's belongings were where they should be. Her mobile phone and wallet were not in the house, indicating that she had likely left with them earlier that day. But the fact that she had not returned or contacted anyone was troubling. I had a telephone call from Susie, one of Claudia's best friends, and uh, she was very concerned that she hadn't been able to contact Claudia. I was extremely worried because Claudia is always constantly in touch with her friends. And it's very unlike her uh, not to be. The slippers were just inside the door, as there would be if she'd uh, popped her boots on that March morning uh, to go up to the university. And everything looked perfectly in order. One of the most important details about that day was that Claudia's phone was last active on the morning of March 19th. Records later showed that she had sent a text message to a friend at around 8.23 a.m. After that, her phone was deliberately switched off and no one could reach her again. Tired of the darknet threats and worried about criminals invading your online privacy? Say goodbye to vulnerability and hello to top-notch security with Angel VPN. With Angel VPN, protect yourself from cyber criminals and stay safe while browsing. Ensure your online activities are secure and private away from prying eyes. Ready to safeguard your digital world? Get 30% off any plan with promo code TCRIMEYT. Visit angelvpn.com now and shield your connection from dark net dangers. This sudden cut in communication made people even more anxious because it was clear that something unusual happened. John Lawrence, Claudia's mother, was not immediately informed about her daughter's disappearance, which contributed to the confusion and distress for the family. Joan and Claudia were close, and Joan later expressed how much it hurt her not to have been informed right away. This delay in communication among family members made an already difficult situation even harder to bear. Peter Lawrence reported Claudia missing to the police on March 20th, 2009 marking the beginning of one of the most significant police investigation in North Yorkshire's history. Claudia went missing in March 2009. There was obviously a possibility that she'd been harmed by somebody, so police had to look at her romantic relationships as well as her other social life. And the starting point for that was the centre of her social life, really. It was the next head pub. The North Yorkshire police quickly realized that Claudia's disappearance was not a simple case of someone getting lost or leaving town for a while. Claudia had left important items, such as her phone and bank cards, which made it seem unlikely that she had just gone away on her own. They launched an extensive search to find out what had happened to her. The police called in a large number of resources to help in the search for Claudia. Over 100 officers were involved in the investigation and joined by volunteers who wanted to help. The search was very detailed and thorough. Officers looked through many different areas, including parts of York and places Claudia was known to visit. They brought in sniffer dogs to help search for clues, hoping the dogs could pick up a scent that would lead them to Claudia. They also conducted fingertip searches, where officers carefully combed through areas inch by inch to look for any tiny pieces of evidence that might have been missed. 
The search efforts were very time-consuming and required a lot of work. North Yorkshire Police have taken a lot of criticism over the investigation, and I think partly for that and because it's still a live investigation, they're reluctant to talk to the media about it. The police also brought in reinforcements from surrounding police forces to ensure they had enough help. These additional officers joined the search teams, and they looked through many different locations, hoping to find any sign of Claudia. Despite this effort, they didn't find anything significant in those early days of the investigation. During this time, the police also questioned many who might have had information about Claudia's whereabouts. They interviewed friends, family members, and people who knew her, trying to piece together what might have happened. They wanted to understand if there were any signs that something terrible might have happened to her, or if there was anything in her life that might explain why she had disappeared. However, none of these interviews provided any clear answers, and the mystery of Claudia's disappearance only deepened. Just a couple of months, over a thousand witness statements have been taken, 240 different properties searched, and everything drew a blank. Is everybody being honest with you? I don't think people are, are being completely honest with us and, and those particularly closest uh, to Claudia and, and associates, I still think there's information they are, they are um, not divulging at the minute. For whatever reason, I would encourage them to come forward. After a couple of months had passed, the investigation had conducted over 1,000 witness interviews and searched 240 different properties, including homes, businesses, and other locations. Despite their efforts, none of the leads had panned out and they still didn't have a clear picture of what had happened to Claudia. The police continued to investigate but found themselves running into dead ends. Every promising lead eventually fizzled out, leaving them with no new information. As a result, the investigation started to lose momentum, and the cost of the search became a concern due to the extensive resources needed to keep the case going. There were more than 100 officers involved, 70 volunteers, police reinforcements brought in from surrounding forces, sniffer dogs, fingertip searches taking place. Very time consuming, very expensive, very resource intensive searches. In the summer of 2009, the police had spent over three quarters of a million pounds on the investigation. Due to a lack of promising leads and the high cost of the ongoing search, the police made the tough decision to reduce the scale of the investigation. Initially, there were over 100 officers involved, but by the summer of 2009, this number was reduced to 16. Eventually, the team was scaled down even further, with only seven officers remaining on the case. This reduction in resources was a difficult choice for the police, but they couldn't justify keeping so many officers on the case without making progress. While the decrease in the number of officers didn't indicate that the police had given up on fighting Claudia, it did mean that they had to focus their efforts more carefully. They couldn't keep searching endlessly without new information. So, they had to prioritize their resources and wait for new leads to come in. Unfortunately, despite the best efforts of the police, no new information emerged, and the investigation appeared to be at a standstill. On April 24, 2009, after a month of searching with no success, the police made an important announcement. The man leading the investigation declared that they are now treating Claudia's case as a murder investigation rather than a missing persons case. It's now 11 weeks since Claudia disappeared. There's been no proof of life. I'm treating this investigation as one of suspected murder. This was a significant shift in the investigation because it meant that the police now believed Claudia had been the victim of foul play. However, Claudia's family disagreed with this conclusion. They still believed that Claudia might be alive and that she was simply missing rather than being a victim of murder. The police had searched many different locations during the investigation, but one place that became a particular focus was a pub called the Nags Head. Officers searched this pub and they used a special dog trained to detect human remains in the search. During this search, they found a bedsheet with a blood spot on it, which was taken for further analysis. The discovery of the blood spot caused a lot of speculation, 
and there were reports in the press that this might be an essential piece of evidence in the case. After the police conducted DNA tests on the blood spot, the results turned out to be inconclusive. This meant that they couldn't determine whose blood it was or if it had anything to do with Claudia's disappearance. In 2013, four years after Claudia Lawrence went missing, the North Yorkshire Police decided to review the entire case from the beginning. By this time, the investigation into Claudia's disappearance had largely stalled, and no significant progress had been made. The case had originally been classified as a murder investigation, but there had been no arrests or breakthroughs. However, in 2013, a new crime unit was established, specifically focused on reviewing old major crimes, and Claudia's case was one of the first they decided to re-examine. This new major crime unit was made up of experienced police officers who had worked on complex cases before. There was a renewed hope among the investigators and Claudia's family that this review could bring new developments. The police believed that going over all the evidence again might uncover something that had been missing during the original investigation. The team began by re-evaluating all the evidence collected since Claudia went missing, including phone records and witness statements. They even went through a lot of CCTV footage. The hope was that they could find new leads with fresh eyes and new technology. As part of this review, the police conducted new searches in areas that were previously linked to Claudia's disappearance. One of these locations was a pub in the Acom area of York, where Claudia had spent a lot of time before she went missing. The police decided to dig up the pub's cellar in case it contained any hidden evidence. Unfortunately, despite their efforts, nothing significant was found during these searches. In addition to the new searches, the police also re-examined CCTV footage from around the time of Claudia's disappearance. Advances in technology allowed them to analyze the footage in more detail than they had been able to do previously. This led to identifying a car that appeared to be connected to the case. The vehicle was seized by the police and examined thoroughly for any evidence that might link it to Claudia's disappearance. However, despite this new lead, the examination of the car did not provide the breakthrough the police were hoping for. During those 14 years, there have been theories come forward and possible leads and hope that we're nearing a conclusion, but every time it's come to nothing. But now it seems that there is a credible lead. After the most recent story that I wrote, I got an email from somebody who wanted to be put in touch with Joan. Joan's reaction to it suggests it's the most credible lead that she's had. I've not known her to be so positive about something before this. When you look at the CCTV images, at 7.15pm on Wednesday the 18th of March, a male, and in all probability is a male, walks around the back of the property. Was that individual going around to check that Claudia was in the house? As the male starts to leave Hewitt's place, they stopped in the street when somebody walked past on the main road. They just stopped for a few moments to allow the person to walk past and it's not like they were giving way to them, it just appeared as though they didn't want to be seen by them. That individual has never been traced by the police. In 2014, a year after the case review began, the police made the first major arrest in the investigation. A man was arrested on suspicion of murder and his home was searched as part of the investigation. The police hoped this arrest would lead to new information and potentially solve the case. However, after questioning the man and examining the evidence, the police could not charge him with any crime. He was released and the investigation continued. The following year, in 2015, the police made another arrest, this time for perverting the course of justice. 
This arrest again raised hopes that the case might be nearing a resolution. The man arrested was believed to have information that could shed light on what had happened to Claudia. However, like the previous arrest, this one failed to produce conclusive evidence, and the man was eventually released without charge. Despite the setbacks, the police did not give up and continued searching for new leads. Later in 2015, the police made yet another arrest, again on suspicion of murder. This time, four men were arrested as part of the investigation. The arrests were made after the police conducted an advanced analysis of CCTV footage and DNA evidence. The police hoped these arrests would finally lead to the answers they had been searching for since 2009. A file was sent to the Crown Prosecution Service, the government agency responsible for deciding whether to bring criminal charges against someone. The CPS reviewed the evidence and decided there was not enough to charge the men with a crime. As a result, they were all released without being charged. I'm determined to, to make sure that we give them the opportunity to come forward with the right information. If they continue to lie and we prove they lie, they'll be arrested. As the investigation continued to struggle, new theories emerged about what might have happened to Claudia. One of these theories involved the possibility that Claudia had been linked to a notorious serial killer. Christopher Halwell, a taxi driver from Swindon, had been convicted in 2012 of murdering two women. There were reports that a witness had seen Claudia talking to a man near her home in 2009 who matched Halwell's description. This led to speculation that Claudia might have been one of Halwell's victims. The police officer who had been responsible for securing Halwell's conviction investigated this theory and considered it to be credible. However, there were problems with linking Halwell to Claudia's case. Although Halwell had some connections to Yorkshire, they were in Hatfield, quite a distance from York, where Claudia disappeared. While the theory remained a possibility, it was never proven and there was no concrete evidence to suggest that Halwell was involved in Claudia's disappearance. I'll get charged with this, and if I'm guilty, I'll get natural. I'll be flying 50 now, but 25 years to go, so the chances are looking good as it is. Um, if I wrap this up in the next few hours, any other charges against me will be brought. There's a it's the past, I think you probably know about various things in the past, this car there's breaking some pieces and um, some more serious. Well that, will clearing this up be enough to stop everything else? I don't want to keep coming back every couple of years on a different charge all the time. So what I'm saying is, if I can clear this up in the next few hours, will everything else be forgotten? Previous serial killers are brought into stories like, oh, it could be them. And then you start thinking, could it be? Another theory that emerged during the investigation was that Claudia might have been trafficked abroad. This theory suggested that Claudia had been taken out of the country against her will and might be living in a foreign country without any way to contact her family. One version of this theory speculated that Claudia had been trafficked to Cyprus a country she had visited two years earlier in 2007 with a friend. Some people believed that she might have been smuggled out of the UK in a van and taken to Cyprus, where she could be living under duress. The police took this theory seriously and decided to investigate it further. In July 2012, police officers traveled to Cyprus to investigate the possibility that Claudia had been trafficked there. They spoke to people who had known Claudia and tried to find any evidence that she might be in the country. They also questioned a man who regularly drove a van between the UK and Cyprus, as there were rumors that Claudia might have been smuggled into the country in his vehicle. However, after interviewing him and checking out his story, the police determined that he was not involved in Claudia's disappearance. Despite their efforts in Cyprus, the police were unable to find any evidence to support the theory that Claudia had been trafficked there. No one in Cyprus had seen her, and there was no trace of her in the country. 
On the Sunday afternoon, I was in charge of the news desk, and we had a story lined up for the front page about a murder. A press release came in about Claudia being missing, and it seemed a really exceptional case. Uh, the police said it was out of character. Her parents issued a very emotional plea for her return. So the editor decided that would be the splash for the Monday. The theory that Claudia had been smuggled out of the UK and taken to Cyprus seemed unlikely, and the police eventually ruled it out as a possibility. Another version of the trafficking theory suggested that Claudia had been taken to Amsterdam. This theory gained traction after a private detective claimed to have seen Claudia in the city. Amsterdam is known for its connections to the sex trade, and some people speculated that Claudia might have been trafficked there. Claudia's mother, Joan Lawrence, also considered the possibility that her daughter had been trafficked to Amsterdam. She had heard rumors of a wine slave trade, which involved women being taken out of the country and forced into sex work abroad. To investigate this possibility, the police contacted their counterparts in the Netherlands. I guess sex trafficking did come up in my mind as a possibility. Although Claudia's 35 when she went missing, I think it's usually young girls that get trafficked. There was this gentleman from York who had gone to live at Hartlepool contacted me, he was convinced he saw Claudia down by the marina. He recognised her from living in York. This gentleman told me there were boats going to Amsterdam daily from Hartlepool and she could have been on one of them. This man had tried to lure her. She said she will never, ever forget his eyes. She got such a clear view of him. But she knew who he was when she saw his photograph on television and in the papers. Dutch police checked into the story, but like the investigation in Cyprus, they were unable to find any evidence that Claudia had been trafficked to Amsterdam. No one in the city had seen her, and there was no sign of her in any of the places the police investigated. The theory that Claudia had been trafficked to Amsterdam remained just that, a theory, and there was no concrete evidence to support it. Claudia's mother, Dawn, continued to speculate about the possibility of trafficking, but she also found it hard to believe that her daughter could have disappeared without a trace. Joan was skeptical that Claudia could have left the country without using her passport or bank account, as it would have left a trail. Joan remained convinced that something else had happened to Claudia but the exact details remained a mystery. During this time, Claudia's family, especially her father, Peter Lawrence, continued to fight for answers. They never gave up hope that Claudia would be found and remained active in raising awareness about her disappearance. Peter Lawrence also took in another important mission, to change the law in the UK to help families of missing people. He realized early on in Claudia's disappearance that there was a big problem with the way the law worked when someone went missing. Families had no legal rights to manage the financial and property affairs of their missing loved ones, which could cause a lot of difficulties. Peter campaigned tirelessly for a change in the law that would allow families to step in and take care of their loved ones' affairs if they were missing. His efforts were successful, and in 2017, the UK Parliament passed a new law called the Guardianship of Missing Persons Act 2017, known as Claudia's Law. This law allowed relatives of missing persons to apply for legal rights to manage their affairs, such as their bank accounts and property, after they had been missing for 90 days. This was a significant change and was seen as a major victory for families of missing people. Even though the investigation into Claudia's disappearance did not provide the answers her family was seeking, Claudia's law was a lasting legacy that helped many other families facing similar situations. By the end of 2015, the police investigation into Claudia's disappearance had slowed down again. The case was now in what is known as a reactive phase, which means that the police weren't actively investigating unless new evidence came to light. Despite this, Claudia's family continued to hold out hope that one day, someone would come forward with the information they needed to finally solve the mystery of what had happened to her. Even though these efforts to find Claudia didn't lead to any charges or a resolution to the case, they showed the dedication of the police to find answers. The creation of Claudia's law was a significant achievement that came out of this tragedy, providing help to other families in similar situations. Although the investigation remains unresolved, 
the legacy of Claudia Lawrence continues through the changes in the law and the ongoing hope that the truth will be revealed one day. We'd love to hear what you think about this case. Do you think Claudia will be found in the end? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks a bunch for watching this video. And we can't wait to see you in the next one.